call this work session to order. This is typically not so formal, but we'll try to keep it informal, uh, having it in the council chambers. Uh, uh, the mayor wanted to move it in here for the benefit of all and for uh, transparency and to, for all of the people to be able to get this information. I said, that's a good idea. Let's do it. So, uh, the first item on tonight's work session will be a discussion of the economic impact of the Fairhope Airport. Uh, I'm going to ask Airport uh, Chairman Joe McInerney to come forward. And... Uh, whomever else you want to bring with the airport authority, Joe. And uh, I'm going to preface this discussion by addressing some allegations that were made quite falsely uh, this past week. Uh, there were allegations of misconduct. Uh, there were allegations that there were ethics violations on behalf of the airport authority to award a contract to an airport authority member. I passed out to the council members a very lengthy opinion from the Ethics Commission, which was gained in February of this year. Uh, that was handed down after the applicant uh, hired an independent attorney to write a, a letter to the Ethics Commission. They paid for that with their own money. It was a very, very lengthy letter. And, uh, and then it came back. Uh, the Ethics Commission came back, and if you can see this, this is four, five, or six, or seven pages uh, with an advisory opinion that was unanimous uh, that there was no conflict of interest. And I don't really appreciate good people being torn down. I think it's ridiculous that good people are trying to be tor torn down in this. The airport authority has done nothing but good for this city, and I, for one, don't appreciate it. So... Uh, we need to put that to bed right away. So, uh, uh, your, uh, this is not public participation, Mr. Rip. Your comments are not appreciated, most especially. Well, you can wait until the council meeting when we have it. That will be fine. Yes, sir. You will, you will have that opportunity. You're welcome. Uh, Mr. McInerney, uh, would you like to give us a rundown on the... Uh, economic import, uh, impact of the Fairhope Airport Authority. I appreciate that, Jack. And I'm Joe McInerney. I'm chairman of uh, Fairhope Airport Authority. Uh, several of my board members, Pam Cordell. Sorry, several of my board members, Pam Cordell, Chip Groner, um, Vince Boo for here. I don't see anybody else. But anyway, we're a volunteer board. We're an airport authority chartered in the state of Alabama. Uh, and we basically try to promote aviation and economic development or, or in, in association with the airport. And what I originally came today to do, what I was asked to do is kind of give a summary to our, new, to our new council, kind of an overview of what the economic impacts of the airport are. And I've given them a handout, and I'd like to just briefly go through that. I certainly, um, if anybody, any of the council members have questions, we can, we can certain stop. We can stop and talk about those. But anyway, long story short is that... Um, we're basically promoting aviation and economic development in, in, around our airport. Around our airport, we've we, we encouraged the relocation of Seegers, which was a 2.7 million dollar initial investment, 3.5 million dollars of capital investment in the last four years to come there and 110 employees. We've encouraged the expansion of Continental Motors, 1.4 million dollar initial investment, and another million dollars pending that'll come out in 2017. We have 26 employees and soon to be uh, maybe another, soon to have an announcement of another 10 employees. We've encouraged the relocation of Continental of Executive Aviation Group, which has had $8.5 million of um, capital investments and six employees. They're basically an air taxi service that's housed, that, that basically is based in Fairhope, that can fly people with medical emergencies or sicknesses all over the nation with, with a fleet of jet aircraft. Uh, we encouraged or promoted the construction of, a, of, of three hangars, construction of Cedar Creek, which was a $1.4 million investment. Mid-Bay Air for $700,000. It's going to be around $800,000 when, when we get it through with it. We develop a wetland mitigation bank. There's several of those. Some of the airport land adjacent to the airport can't be used for anything. And we developed the only wetlands, wetland mitigation bank south of Montgomery. And we sold wetlands credit and reimbursed uh, reimbursed, paid off some of the loan that we have. Uh, we 
we sell aviation fuel. That's our main source of revenue, or one of our main sources of revenue. We sold 250,000 gallons of jet fuel last year and got a 7% surcharge for the fuel that we sold. And we, uh, we, we've gathered <coughs> construction impact fees on $7.4 million of construction out there. That's the, that's the hangars, the aviation academy, um, all the, the work that Continental has done to improve their circumstances. Anyway, a lot of, a lot of, funny, a lot of aspects. Um, anyway, most of the, most of the um, guests from the, or 15 to 20 percent of the guests from the Grand Hotel arrive by General Aviation Air, Airport. The, Air, the, uh, the Fair Up Airport Authority is a f foreign trade zone free of taxation. Um, the airport provides the eastern shore, and that's uh, Point Clear and Daphne, access to corporate, to corporate aviation. People fly in, have meetings at the airport, and then fly out all in a day's work. I mean, we have, in any one time, we'll have four to five jets on the runway that are basically people coming in to do business in Fair Up or in the eastern shore, and basically then leaving after that, after that business is done. Uh, we've, we've got 75 acres that we've designated as an, AV, as an advantage site that we're waiting for you know, a, a, new, um, a new development to come in there. We've actually gone through the process to get that shovel ready. Um, and we also housed an Alabama State Trooper and Forestry Commission hangar out there. Uh, on a promotional thing, we, we and our partner, Continental Motors, who is the FBO, we host um, AV classics. We host uh, events all the time, maybe one to two a year. Most recently, we had the Air Race Classic, which was a woman's fly-in of about, uh, about, 100, about 60 planes, about 150 women. We had an LBO, LOBO fly-in in, in uh, October, and we're, ho and we're hosting the Naseo Conference in September 2018. All these people come and stay in the hotel, fly in, and spend money in our community. And we try to, we try to, um, anyway, um, the, the challenges facing our airport, um, or we're, we, we, we've got some debt that we assumed when we bought, we bought some land around the airport, 251 acres. We've reduced that down to 242 acres, but we've got $7.4 million in debt. Uh, we, I would like to refinance that debt now while, while interest rates are at an all-time all low. We, it's a floating rate note now, and we'd like to float, fix it, do it on a fixed rate. Uh, We've, in, we've been successful over the last, <coughs> I guess, over the last four years in attracting FAA grant money. We brought in about $8 million in FAA grant money to the airport. We've got a $3.3 million construction project going on as we speak. We've, um, and we've got, and we've applied or will apply in the June time frame for another $2.5 million from the FAA. Um, we, we're looking to develop a, a general aviation terminal at the airport. Right now, when people fly into our community, they don't, what they see is a, a 1960s venue FBO. We'd like to develop a, 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 a venue that people are, are proud of. We've, we've ranged for about $350,000 in capital for that. It'll be about $700,000 on a project. And we've recently implemented a marketing plan to try to promote the airport and Fairhope throughout the United States through aviation channels. <coughs> okay. Any questions for Joe, Council, or Mayor? I, I do have some yes. I agree that the airport is an asset to uh, Fair Hope when it's going to be uh, developed in a way that will be an asset to Fair Hope. Uh, back in 2007, we purchased land uh, for $8.75 million, and I think we consolidated some debt also in that. And at the time, I'm not sure why this happened, and maybe it was a good decision at the time, but um, we put the debt in the airport's name, and then the city has obligated itself through appropriation in excess of $500,000 a year um, to pay for that. And although I do see potential in the airport, and I do think that the, the volunteers that have helped bring the, the airport to what it is today, I mean, it is amazing what y'all been able to accomplish. I do think that your goals for the airport and the goals for me as the mayor and, and having something that benefits all the citizens of Fairhope, um, they're just two different things. Um, if 
because this debt represents over 20% of our overall debt, um, I do have to take this very seriously, and I have to look at it in a way that, you know, really I, I feel like the city is going to be in a better position to develop it in such a way that we get this debt off of our books and hopefully um, pay back about $3 million worth of interest that we have paid since 2007. So um, I had sent an email to the airport board, and I thought I had all the emails, but um, we are going to exercise our, uh, uh, for the contract um, if at any time after March 15, 2012, um, we can take the, the land back if the principal wasn't paid back for $10. And I do think this is in the best interest of the citizens of Fair Lake. Um, again, we've been paying for this since 2007, and um, I think that myself decisions that will benefit all of our citizens. Uh, when you spend money like that every year and we try to prioritize our spending in a way that is good for our, our voters, um, you know, you have to measure that compared to what we give our five public schools. And of course, we have been given the airport a lot more than that, and there wasn't a plan. You know, what, what, what is the goal? And um, I think nine years is enough. So we want to help the airport be the best it can be. But we've got to develop it in a way that's good for Fairhope and its citizens. And that's why I'm, I'm going to take the land back, uh, renegotiate the loan, and we will, the, the rates are low. We definitely want to get that on a fixed interest rate since it does balloon in 20, or 2020. Those are my Comments, Council? Anybody? This is informal. I had a question about <clears throat> about taking that back. I mean, if we take it back, it's still subject to a mortgage, the same mortgage as currently on the property. Um, also, we've got the FAA grant money that's tied up with the actual airport facility and, and sort of the east side. What is required if, if we take this back? I mean, if we're taking it back, we're taking back a portion. Because you'd have to repay the grant, right? I'm not going to change any plans that has been, have been negotiated with FAA to, to expand that. And um, had I been brought into the conversation uh, as I wish that I would have for the beginning, I would have explained all that. But no, we. I want the airport, and then the city wants an, an airport that can be uh, have a positive impact on our economy. And I think this has great potential to do that. But right now, we are not in a position, the city um, really should have never, we should have never purchased the land to begin with, but we did purchase it. And um, we put the land in the airport authority's name, and then we just wrote the, the appropriation every year. Well, we don't pay for it, we need to have the land. I do, I do want to set the record, I mean, the airport authority did not go out and say, we want to buy this land. The city the mayor brought this and said, this is, a, this is what we want you to do. Well, I'm not blaming on no, Nobody okay. at this table well, has anything okay. to do with the history, mm -hmm. unfortunately. But we do have to look forward now and, and do what's right for the citizens. And what we want as a city is going to be different than what y'all are working on as an airport. I want the airport to be extremely successful. And y'all have done an amazing job in doing what you can with the volunteer voluntary board. I think it's amazing. Um, but because there is no sense of urgency to get take care of this debt when it's just always the city will take care of it. And I feel now it's my responsibility to make sure that it's a top priority, again, since it represents over 20% of our debt. So. What are some things that we're thinking about doing with the property? Yeah, well, for one thing, we're going to have a plan. And do I have that plan right now? No, but there has never been a plan, and we want to make it part of a comprehensive plan. Um, we do have unbelievable talent that we've been interviewing, and we're going to you know, share that information with you all. But piecemealing sales for 30% of what we pay for the land is not prudent, and we have to make 
a comprehensive plan that will not only pay off this huge debt, a debt that the airport cannot pay. I mean, they wouldn't be able to get this approved without the city saying, we're going to pay that. So we're just, we're just going to take it and we're going to develop it in a way that we can pay back that, not only the debt that's, that's there, but also recouping the $3 million we've already paid. And Mayor, I had a question on um, just on the economic development aspect of this. I had spoken with a few economic developers, and they had indicated one reason you would keep it in the airport authority's name is that municipalities are now, um, I guess, handcuffed a little bit as far as what they're able to offer and incentives, and that they this may have more of a benefit. This is the land. But they felt that the airport authority would be able to offer better incentives to recruit business they to the They can still offer their incentives. That land has nothing to do with incentives. The land should have never been purchased. Well, I'm, I will argue that point. <laughs> well, I, I'll take a little bit of exception to that. We have, we have 51 acres on the east side has allowed us to go out and attract about $11 million of um, of FAA money and will allow us to expand the airport to serve the community for the next 50 years. I, I, I'm not trying to be short-sighted. Okay. I recognize that an airport like this can be a huge benefit, and it is a benefit to some okay. extent right now. I have to think of our citizens, though. And if you were in my shoes, you would be doing the same. I have to do what is appropriate for the citizens. They're paying for this. Okay? I don't know. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. <laughs> you don't have a microphone. Well, we can hear you. So, <laughs> so what, are, what are the pros and cons, I guess, is the city versus the airport authority owning that land? What, what are the, what's the advantage of the city? I understand you're saying the city, you want the city to have control over because the city's paying the note on it. Right. But it's, is that going to make it less attractive to no. people? I'm, I'm, I'm like scratching my head going, did y'all all get together and have a conference before this meeting? I mean, that makes no sense. No, we didn't have a conference. But that makes no sense, the questions you're asking. This is the land that was purchased for the airport. But my point is, if you've, got a, if you've got a group the, of an airport authority board that are familiar with aviation and right. and would know what would need to be done to attract certain businesses. Like I said, if they've had nine years to do it. I have to make a decision for the citizens of Fairfield. I understand what they had. $8 million, $8 million worth of farmland, and they've had to do the infrastructure improvements to get it to where they could market They've had so. nine years to do that. <clears throat> For land that should not have been purchased, again, it right. doesn't have I'm to be I understand. Price, we, we're not, but that's, that's true. We, you know, it, it, even if it was a bad decision or a good decision, regardless, we are here today. We still owe about the same amount of money that we did in 2007, and I'm pretty sure all the voters in Fairhope, if they saw a priority of spending, and they saw over $500,000 a year going out every single year as an appropriation to the airport. And then they see, just in the last four years, because we haven't given any money to schools before this, $300, I mean $300,000 to our five public schools. I can assure you that's not a priority of spending that the citizens of Fairhope want. No, no, no. We they are they are dependent upon the city. Let me let me kind of give you all some some awesome other facts and figures, if I may. We're in the middle. We're at we're at the end of this year. We'll be at about what eight million dollars in improvements. If you talk about the investment made, eight million dollars worth of improvements, uh, not counting the private hangars, which is one point four. One point four. Then eight hundred. Two point two million. Another two point one. Uh, how much of an investment did Continental make in the building, which is all owned by the airport authority? They own a million. They made a million two plus. They're going to make another million in 2017. So we're at um, two to ten. We're somewhere around eleven and a half million dollars in improvements. And yes, uh, the city can continue to, to go after that. But we, when we assume that note, if we finance that note, 7.45 million for 15 years, and I ran it at two percent. At 2% interest, it's $575,000 a year, $575,297 a year to be exact. Now, so that's going to be the city's to um, service. 
regardless if we have the land or not. Yes. Correct. That, that That's all we're be, doing. All we're doing is yes. taking the asset. So what if we hinder ourselves to, to be able to use that land for economic development by taking it back from the airport authority, such as was suggested, there's nothing also to prevent the person that may be hired by the city to assist with marketing that land. I don't see, but if, but if they're hindered by the fact that we took it back, which the council needs to approve, and that's one of the brought up, that's a, that's a contract that has to be broken by the council. And if we purchase that, that is a purchase. It's actually already expired. Property. It's expired, 2012. Okay, well, I, I think that any purchase or any finance agreement, any contract that the city enters into whatsoever has to be approved by the council. I don't know why you, anybody would not approve something that is in the best interest of the city. And I want what's best for the airport. I want it to be a, a better impact um, economically for the, the citizens and for the city of Fairhope. I want the best things, and I'm not going to hinder anyone by doing this. Right. I just I think that if you take Mr. Conyers' comments into account, that it may actually hinder us to take it back. It may be best left with the airport authority. Now, if that happens, let me also, is the attorney for the airport authority here today? Josh, yes, can I ask you a question? The way I understand it is that of that land that was purchased in, in 2007, if that reverts back to the city, it's only that part of the airport property which is not permanent property. The, some of that becomes fist, fixed assets of the airport authority, such as the runway. In other words, the city doesn't get the runway back and, and the aprons and the taxiways. And that land on the east side, I believe, because it's encumbered by FAA grant money, may become part of that permanent airport property. That's, I have a question. As I stated before, it's, it has nothing to do with what your plans are. We want to help with that, but we do want to make sure that we bring development industry in quickly so we can retire this tenure debt. I'm trying, I'm trying to get to my point here. If, if, does that going to stay uh, with the airport authority or that land that's encumbered by the FAA grant money, would that revert, could that, could that for the $10 revert back to the city? And, and the reason I'm asking the question is this, because if the land that comes back to the city is reduced by those parcels of land, you've got $7.45 million owed on a lot less land to, to sell to be recovered, which drives the price up to about $53,000 Nathan. If you think it was a bad deal in 2007, it's gonna be a really bad deal in 2016, if in fact that's what, what occurred. So do you feel, Jack, that it's better to leave the land in the airport where there hasn't been a plan and there hasn't been any interest paid and for us to continue to pay the appropriation? I think it's almost a wash. I think that we might be tying our own hands if, if the city takes it back. And I, and I, don't, say, I, I don't want to say that nothing's been expired. In just the last two years alone, one and a half million dollars worth of debt has been, uh, been retired. So just when they're hitting their stride and they're in the midst of a $10 million improvement, they'll be in about $8 million into it right now. Um, and I actually, I add that up to what, closer to $11.5 million, uh, which will ultimately be about $13.5 million. I, I don't know that we want to upset the apple cart. And, 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 and I promise you this is not upsetting the apple cart. This is doing something that is important to the citizens of Fairhope. We're taking back an asset that we've already been paying for. We want good things for the airport. We're going to work together to accomplish those things. And I can promise you, when you tell this story to citizens, they do scratch their head and wonder, why have we been paying it this long? Why hasn't there been a plan? Why hasn't there been accountability? Well, we wouldn't, it, wouldn't it be better to come up with a plan and go to the airport authority and say this is what the city would like to do? Well, they've had since 2007, but, and but I, I know that I, I know that with a comprehensive plan that we're going to be doing and the study with the BP funds that we're going to put in for, we can come up with a plan that is good for everybody, including the airport authority. Well, that, to me, it makes more sense to come up with that plan than approach the airport authority. I mean, it almost, it's almost like 
federal government, let's pass it and then we'll see what's in it. If we are hindering ourselves from getting some of that land back, if we, if we the city does buy it back and we only get part of the land, that doesn't seem like we're, I understand what you're saying, the city's paying for it and the city should own the land and be in charge of it. But. Nobody can answer why the land was put in the airport. Maybe if it was because we had too much debt in 2007. No, that was, that was, that was a okay, reason. but we're not like that anymore, so why would we not take it now? There's no reason why we should not take the land back. And, and Mayor, my, my question or my comment earlier about economic development, that was, um, I mean, I have no definitive opinion one way or the other on this. This is something that came up as a sidebar to a conversation I was having about a month ago with an economic development individual, and, and they indicated, just talking about the airport, that it would probably be more beneficial to keep it in the airport authority's name. I, I'd be open to asking multiple people in that line of work why that is more specifically, but it was basically due to the incentives, and I, I, I mean, it was better. The, the incentives better. will not be affected. The FAA that, that gives the airport money, that money is being used to develop the airport. I'm talking about incentives for us to recruit. You know, but the city can do incentives, days. too. Well, it's a lot more uh, difficult for cities to do that than it used to be, and it's easier for something like an airport authority offer an incentive package to recruit um, private industry. And, and that was their logic behind it. Whose logic? I guess you'll just have to give me uh, specifics because I know that if we bring in something, understand too that if land is being piecemeal sold without a plan, which is what's been happening, and there is not a big plan, the liability is becoming worse and worse for the citizens. It's not like we're saying, oh, we're not going to work with you anymore. We're going to work with the airport to make the airport the best it can be. But I have bigger priorities as the mayor of Fairhope to represent the citizens to get this paid quickly and get the debt off of our books quickly. I mean, do you agree? I, I mean, I'm all for debt reduction, absolutely. Okay. I, I would kind of second what Robert's saying. Let's get a plan. Let's get an economic developer and say, hey, is this in our best interest to take it back? And if they say yes, then let's take it back and recommit. It, it is in the best interest to take it back. And you can vote on it if, if you want, but I can promise you I've already talked to a lot of people over the last two and a half months, and it's a huge question mark on why the land that we are paying for is still in the airport authority's name. No, nobody can answer that. I mean, can you? I mean, anybody on this panel, can anybody answer why the land is in the airport's name? Well, I mean, the, the original reason was that the city, when we, we when we bought it, did not have the constitutional debt yeah. authority to, you know. I said that, and but we, that, we're not in that situation okay. anymore. So I said, why would we, and why would it be the, now? The, the, the debt surface is $428,000, not 500000 We've paid over $500,000 in the past. I, I, you're, that's not right. That's four hundred twenty. Well, the financials that you gave me were wrong because it well, was five hundred over five hundred. But regardless, I'm, I'm, it's still more than we pay the it five is, public schools. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Um, but what I'm saying is, we're not in that situation now, Joe. We can take the land back, pay for it, and come up with a plan. What is wrong with the city coming up with a plan for the airport? Why is everybody so against leaving? I mean, taking the land back. I, I just don't get it. Is it just because you want to disagree with me? <laughs> I mean, it doesn't make sense. My point is, well, there's a lot of talented people around Ferry, but we've all talked about tapping into those talented people that have right. great resources. Right. I definitely intend on so doing that, for sure. Airport Authority Board, they know a lot more about planes and jet fuel and FBOs than I do. So right. why do I want to hire somebody to take on the responsibility of trying to recruit somebody? If we've got a group of professionals... We're, we're, I'm not recruiting. We're, I'm not sure what you mean. This is just for... The, we're not talking about the land that the FAA, that they're getting money for. That this is just to build the part of the land to bring in industry. Because like I said, if you're taking a small piece of land and selling it for a third of what you purchased it for, that's not a good plan. I, I'm just, I have to base this de decisions on the past. What do you base on everything been sold? A third. What, 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 yeah. We paid uh, over thirty-five thousand dollars an acre. Okay, right. and then we sold the nine acres for what? 
I thought it was like twenty eight twenty twenty nine thousand dollars an acre. Yeah. I mean, you, we've made more than one sale. No, we've only had one sale. We uh, the other part we put in a wetlands mitigation bank. We had right. one sale to high grade for nine point seven acres. The other uh, part we we basically was stream bottomland streams that we put in a wetlands mitigation bank. Well, I I guess what we can do from here, just so we're not stuck, is we will. Why don't you just start ask, asking citizens? I got it. Uh, That's the best thing. I mean, don't you think? Joe, can I ask you a question? Yes, yeah, sir. All right. So let me ask you this. If you took an appropriation from the city, okay. say over seven years, let's say you refinance this and you got a guarantee from the city. And you and I talked about this, so this is, you know, we, we, we've discussed this before we fully disclose that. Uh, we had talked about if you went seven years, you'd get a, an annual appropriation of 300, 300, 300, 275, 275, 250, and 250, and I'm round, and it could yep. be something thereabouts. That would be over seven years, 1.95 million. Now, if the city refinanced it for 15 years at 2%, over the same seven years, they would pay 4.03. Granted, we could still have the person that would market this for the city trying to pay off this debt at the same time, and hopefully it would be paid off. But if not, what do you think the chances of the airport authority, first of all, could you live with that amount of money? Yeah. And second of all, at the end of seven years, where do you think you would be? Well, I mean, you know, the conversation we've had, we, we're, we've been promised by the FAA $160,000 going forward for land reimbursement cost. That's a, so that's... That's about that's that, about that can a, go towards the loan. That, that, that can go to the loan to about a million and a half dollars, and so we you know we feel like in the next five years we'll recoup that. Um, that won't change putting the land in the city's city's name. But the other part of that is, is I think that realistically we did lose three or four years because of the Great Recession. I think right now we're coming out of that. We have some momentum. My sense of it is that we'll have a better chance to sell land to a second tier or third tier Airbus supplier in the next three to four years than we'll ever have in the future. And I'd like to, you know, that would be the opportunity I'd like. So to answer Jack's I'm question. I'm not going to prevent anybody at the airport coming forward and saying this is a great plan. I, I want that to happen. I'm saying that the city needs to be a bigger part of it. And the city needs to take back the land because we've been paying for it. And it, it is our land. It's, it's not like there, it, the airport authority is separate. But we've had this conversation for a long time, Jack and Joe. And I still have not heard of a logical reason why we would not do that. Because that land is not going to affect anything the airport does. The land will still stay there for the FAA money that you already have planned it's not going to touch mm -hmm. that to me this is what any ceo of a company would do if they had a huge debt that ma made up over 20 percent of the whole city's debt and it's unsecured i mean we're just going to take the land back i don't understand why this is such a big deal to everybody up here I think, yeah, but the cost is going to be the same. Like said, the cost I, I, is... I, I mean, honestly, I don't know what else I can say. It's not reducing the, our, it's not reducing the amount of debt that we have one bit to take it away from the authority. But like you said, it may or may not. I think it's worth exploring. That's why we have these work sessions. It's worth exploring. Does it hinder our ability to market that land? And that would be one argument. It's, it's not going to hinder it whatsoever. I mean, I don't even know. Like I said before, my personal opinion, we should have never purchased the property to begin with. Okay. So if we didn't own it to begin with, and you, you couldn't mark, you, you have an airport there already. The land is there. You can bring in people. It wouldn't matter if the city owned it or if the airport owned it. But at least with, I think the city is in a better position to go out and market this, especially when I'm bringing in an economic development person that can work with Lee Lawson and we can work with the county too. She has, you know, funding availability. I just think we're making it into a plan rather than kicking the can down the road. That's, that's all I'm doing. 
Any comments, Council? Um, Lee, I see you staying in the back of the room. Do you have any uh, input as to whether it makes a difference one way or another? From come, come with it, Peter. I hate to put you on the spot. Yeah, no pressure, just, really. just come and join us. <laughs> you want to introduce yourself? My name is Lee Lawson, uh, president of the Baldwin County Economic Development Alliance. Um, I, I'm not going to weigh in on who should own the land and who should not. Um, that's I think that's for attorneys to decide. I think that's for you and the airport authority to decide jointly as joint bodies. Um, that's not the Economic Development Alliance is not going to take a position who owns the land. I've talked to several of you, including the mayor and. And several of you who've sought my opinion over the last few weeks on this. I'll tell you, um, like I've told everybody else, um, we will continue to help whoever retains title to the land, uh, market it and recruit for it, like we have uh, the past several years. And we've taken many a prospect by the airport. And just like I told the airport authority at their last meeting, 80 plus percent of the airspace prospects that we have had in Baldwin County, including suppliers, including maintenance repair and overall facilities are looking for existing space. And while we've, we've talked with developers and we've talked with folks who can bring that existing space uh, to bear, uh, we have not been able to get, um, get successfully achieve that. Um, and so with that, we've been showing a lot of greenfield opportunities and they've just been fewer and far between, harder to get done. Uh, especially coming out of the recession in the years that we that were already mentioned. What I will say uh, is this, that we we will work with whomever owns title to the land. I don't see it as an ownership perspective. I will say that authorities, and I've worked for an authority before, were created so that, uh, A, you could place specific financing <coughs> for certain reasons, you could hold title to land that cities and municipal governments wouldn't have to hold. Um, and honestly, uh, from that perspective, you know, it, it, doesn't it doesn't matter from that perspective of who owns it, who's going to market it. We're going to continue to market it, work with all of you, including the authority, because the authority is going to still retain some land that's been improved by the FAA. That fact's not going to change. Um, I've, you know, Joe and I have talked about this. I've talked with all of you about this. Your airport is getting to a point where a full-time manager makes sense. I mean, you look at Gulf Shores and what they have. They have an airport authority. They have a full-time executive director that interfaces with that authority. Authorities and industrial development boards were created, A, for a legal purpose, but B, too, to take politics out of decisions that are made on behalf of economic development. Because Honestly, if we're, if we're showing an aerospace company, the, the Fairhope Airport, and we're talking about planes being flown in, the number one complaint you're going to get is noise and traffic. That's the number one complaint you're going to get from citizens out of the airport who've never flown in and out of our airport in Fairhope. Right. That's going to that's gonna prejudice a decision of this body and you to want to sell land to new jobs being created. Honestly, it, it, it's you, not going to. You, just like you want to weigh the, the citizens' decisions, which all of you should, because that's who elected you. You will then have to weigh jobs and capital investment in your community versus citizens' opinion, which you should. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Which you should. Absolutely. That is why authorities were created, because because what was happening in economic development is because a mayor or a certain city council person didn't like a certain deal or a company, uh, then they could turn a deal. Um, and, and turn away jobs from their community if they were anti-growth or anti-business. Um, so that's another reason authorities were given that legal jurisdiction over airport authorities, industrial development boards, and industrial development authorities, and specialty financing, specifically. A lot of the, the, the enabling legislation for these types of bodies were created when special financing was granted only for those bodies to tap into. So as president of the Economic Development Alliance, we're going to continue to market the airport as we market every piece of property in Baldwin County. And I can tell you we've worked with Joe and his great committee, and we've, we've taken numerous companies by the airport, and we've been successful in bringing companies to the airport. And these, these folks are volunteer board members. I mean, they deserve a hand. I mean, these folks are business people in our community that take a lot of time out of their schedule to meet with us, sometimes on weekends, sometimes at night. I mean, it, it's it's all hours. So, 
the airport authority does have a lot of momentum right now. They've done a great job. Um, and we're going to help you market this property because we do see the momentum. Mm -hmm. And we are for marketing this property and getting developers interested in it because it's going to take real space on the ground, not just dirt out there. It's going to take space on the ground uh, for us to achieve some of these successes and these wins. So that's, that's my opinion. I'm not going to sit here definitively and tell you which way to go. That's, that, although I'm a citizen of Fair Oak, that's not my job as president of the Economic Development Alliance to tell you which direction you should go. I can tell you we've had great success and a lot of opportunities to look at the airport over the last couple of years, and we're going to continue to do that no matter who has title to the land. So it sounds to me like you're saying you've been talking and marketing this. There is a plan going on. There's a plan. You've been marketing this airport. You've been bringing companies by there. We've had uh, 10 to $12 million worth of improvements made. Uh, on a piece of property that, yeah, there's still a lot of debt on, but the, but the value of it uh, itself has gone up tremendously. So uh, yeah. I know that we also have a plat for the property on the west side. There's a, there's a plan for that. It hasn't been, hasn't been marketed very well. It definitely needs improvement, no, no question. Um, but um, anyway. Industri industrial development is a, is a, is a long, uh, <coughs> methodical process. It just is. And, Yes, times have changed since you purchased, since the city purchased that dirt. The land values have changed. Um, and other parts of our community have invested in economic development and have put land in public hands, in other authorities' hands. So there's competition out there in the marketplace. Um, and so, uh, you know, what I can say to that is I think the airport's positioned uniquely in being that it's air adjacent, you know, industrial development land for the airport. Um, and you, you're kind of growing into your skin as an airport. Um, you know, you're starting to see some hangar development, potential second FBO out there. That's all that's going to help fuel the, the momentum. There has been a marketing plan in place, and we have been successful at bringing opportunities to look at the airport. That's what we're charged with. And, you know, I think every industrial development in this county deserves a plan to have for their, you know, to, to say, hey, this is what's going to go here, and this is what's not going to go here for sure and I think as the as the airport has evolved so have the plans and so have the notions so we continue to have a strong marketing plan aerospace and aviation and you know that's been our goal for from our standpoint and those are the types of companies we've brought to the airport including Seegers and others over the past and those are the kind that are going to continue to look at the airport a straight industrial company is going to look at other industrial land and other places the airport gives its edge to aviation and Lee was instrumental in bringing Seegers, which is $6.1 million in capital investment and about 130 jobs in 2008 to Fair Oak. And they started with about 60. Yeah. So, I mean, you can see where the, the return on investment is by bringing in aviation and aerospace companies. Long history, uh, just like we've worked with UTC and Bowie, and now up over 1,000 employees. And um, it's a high-paying industry. It's a sustainable industry. And it's one that we think is, is one to, to put some stock in our future in just like some of the white collar companies that we've assisted with too, that I think this community really sets up well for. And like I said, we're gonna, we're gonna continue to work and market our community uh, no matter who holds title to the land. Um, and, and like I said from the beginning, nothing about this decision affects us moving forward. This is not the city against the airport or the airport against the city. It's us working together and having a common goal to make the airport the best that it can be. I believe when we refinance this loan, the city should be put in a better position. Um, if I'm going to be responsible for paying a debt, I absolutely want to be responsible and a big part I'd, identifying the best refinancing options and the best uh, plan for the, the airport. Let me ask a question real quick. And I don't know the answer to this. Jimmy, you might know. Um, if not, we can look into it. Would would it matter as far as us refinancing this loan? Would it would it be better for it to be refinanced under the airport authority's name or the city's name? And would that the airport can't do it. I, mean, I think as long as the city's guaranteeing the debt, it would be the same. And really, my only logic for keeping it in the airport authority would be if the airport authority could offer incentives that the city can't. And I, is that something? No. That, no, I mean, not, not that the city cannot. Um, I can tell you that from a, 
I can offer a lot of that, incentives that with BP that money. Point, um, you're going to have to do more in, um, in open meetings as far as uh, negotiating contracts and all that. And, you know, from that perspective, that, like I said, it, it doesn't matter who owns title to the land. Um, it, what matters is that, you know, we're going to continue to market the aerospace and aviation companies. They're going to continue to come and look. But we are in the process of bringing vertical space uh, to fruition out there, and the people we're talking to want to know who the clear, who, who the clear communication path is with, and that's something that you, you as a body, are going to have to to determine. Uh, we can't come, we can't come talk to ten people. We can't. We have to have, we have to have a, a point person, uh, as, as we do at every city that we deal with in Baldwin County. And, and so that, that's going to have to be clear no matter who owns the title of the land uh, is who will be running point uh, for, for the airport. Jay, I think the answer to your question is yes, the airport authority can refinance the debt, but not without some type of guarantee from the city. So yes, it can be refinanced in the airport authority's name. Is that correct? Yes, that's, that's correct. But it, but it wouldn't affect the terms that we received regardless. Regardless of these well, the way it is now, it's based on a year-to-year -year appropriation, and if it was a longer-term uh, guarantee, you would get a more favorable rate. The city possibly has more opportunity to get a better deal, and I would leave Deborah uh, up to negotiating that because that's what she does. Picking out the development or marketing the airport questions. Uh, You're dismissed. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, uh, so I, do, I, do, I do want to say one thing real quick, uh, Jack, before, before I leave, because we have, we've worked with previous authorities here at the airport, and these guys, like I said, they're volunteers, and a lot of them know the aviation, they know airspace, a lot of them own their own plane, uh, they know the business, and so. Uh, the one recommendation I would have is lean on them for guidance as you plan around FAA because the FAA's put a lot of trust in this authority. They put a lot of money into the authority in this airport. And I can tell you there's a lot of competition for FAA dollars. And that's been what's helped this airport, Gulf Shores Airport, get to the point where they are, FAA grants. And we have to be mindful of that moving forward because they, they help fund infrastructure that then helps economic development piggyback on that. So. Thank you. We appreciate the partnership we have with the city and look forward to working with you through this. Thank you, Lee. Thank you. So, Council, we're going to have to move on to the next item, but I just want to let you know that, you know, interest rates are, are probably going to rise very soon. So, uh, we're going to have to make a decision on this very, very soon. I apologize for breaking up a lot of this uh, meeting time. We'll move it. We'll just work right through the agenda meeting on this uh, work session agenda. But uh, you're going to be asked to make a, a decision on that. Uh, very soon. All right. A discussion of thank you, Joe. And Josh, you never got a chance to answer that question on the <laughs> you, you answered you answered it in the asking of it, which is exactly correct. I mean, the bulk of the property will stay with the airport authority, and the properties it is out to the side, which was part of what I call the McGowan purchase, because that's who it was purchased from, would potentially go back to the city based on what has been discussed. But the airport authority would still have what, what I call the airport proper and then be responsible for managing that. Well, but back to that part that's been uh, improved with FAA money, would that become part of airport proper or does that stay with the so-called McGowan property? I don't, well, as a, as a matter of title, it, it's still part of the McGowan property, but you have a situation where you have a brand new taxiway, new aprons, new hangar right. space that's integrated into the airport but that is not owned by the airport authority. And I don't, you know, I got the email at two o'clock regarding this issue, so I haven't had a chance to look at the grant assurances and the grant applications that we submitted, but we are bound by those, so. <coughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Okay, council. Uh, the next item is discussion of job positions, operations director and economic and community development director. Those are two different positions. Uh, we had asked the mayor at the last uh, meeting to get us a job description uh, specifically for the operations director, and you should have all of that in hand. Uh, along with that, I think that the mayor has expressed the desire to 
uh, create the position of an economic and community development director um, and for the council to fund that position. So with that, um, Mayor, I'll give you the opportunity to uh, speak to those two positions. Okay. Um, I'm creating these two positions. I mean, typically when a new mayor comes comes in, they bring their own team with them. And I didn't want to do that. I want to be able to use um, this, the city employees that we have. I think they're great. And I want to be able to find out what each and every one of their talents are so we can place them in, in the perfect you know, situation with, with the city. We're gonna have so much opportunity in a department that is concentrating on economic development, community development, and that includes tourism, um, that we'll end up probably hiring more people. So we'll be bringing more jobs into the city. But in order for me to, to do this in a way that I will have help identifying the best talent, instead of replacing department heads, which is what I dis discussed with all of y'all individually, I don't want to do that. I want to bring two people in um, that can <coughs> take over, you know, basically two areas of the city. One will both income streams for uh, utilities and, um, of course, that'll be you, it, kind of like a utility director, but um, also in different parts of public works because public works is very extensive and we want to streamline that. And um, the person that I want to bring in for economic development and community development is because that's what the citizens voted me in for. We need responsible growth. And that's the most important issue on the voters' minds. It is what I have identified as the number one thing that has to happen immediately. And this person with her contacts, uh, she has a, a lot of uh, national funding. She has worked uh, with nonprofits, but the job itself is going to have a plan, a plan that has never been in place before in the history of Fairhope. <laughs> And it's going to be good, and it's going to have goals. We, we will know where we are, where we're going in a year, where we're going in five years, because right now we've just been kind of a ship at sea with no lighthouse, and we do need a plan. And, and that's what the economic and community development person would be. And um, the person that would be over the utilities is uh, going to be – taking that huge profit center and making it even better, but also getting to the bottom of the, uh, all of the utilities and, and figuring out what infrastructure we need because there's things that have not been invested in and our citizens do deserve the best quality of life. So um, the job descriptions are there. Um, we did Pandora's here, I think, and she pulled like municipalities for these job descriptions. And um, I think every month that goes by, we will end up making money and saving money. To try to put detail to that right now is premature because I am right now one person. <laughs> Y'all are five and you come you know, here every other week. I have been working diligently to, to put all of these things together and showed you the organizational chart. Um, it's something that I've spent two and a half months on, and um, I believe these people will be crucial in helping us identify ways that we can streamline, keep everyone that we have, and we all win. The alternative is that I would have to replace people and I'll have to leave that to you. Council members, questions for the mayor, or comments, or discussion among ourselves, in any way you like it. The, the first question, Tut, this is for you. Do these jobs, if we created these positions, um, do these jobs have to be posted? What's the protocol? I mean, what's they the will be posted. For that? 
they, so we'll have to we'll post them. How long do they have to be posted for? I can't tell you off the top of my head. I think it's three time. days. The minimum is three days. So we post it for we three do days. Do we, I mean, do we have to conduct interviews based on the resumes that we receive? That is our normal procedure. We um, do receive applications and then whichever department is What about for positions that don't exist? There's no department. It's, it's the that. same process across the board. Who does the interviews? It depends on the department that they're for. Like if it was going to be for public works and we created a position, we need to add it to the compensation study, which is what the procedure is for tonight, we still go through the same process where we post the position, that department head, we receive the application, and then that department interviews you know, the most <coughs> likely candidates. And, and this this range, I mean this is a looking at both the ranges for both positions is 114 to 183. And that's on, a, I, went, I went to through the AAPTA, which is um, an organization through the League of Municipalities. Um, it's all the HR directors throughout the state and a lot of times we bounce questions off of each other all the time whether it be how do you pay this person, or do you have a job description for this? And that's where I got my details from. There was over 20 different municipalities that responded. I mean, my understanding is, and I'm thank you, Pamela. Sure. Um, my understanding is that we've talked to some people about these positions. So this range, I mean, if we've talked to people about it, if we had specific conversations about it, what exactly they'd be getting and it just falls in this range somewhere? Yes. Um, and again, yeah, it's it, not something I'd want to, I don't, I don't think that's not our policies to talk about. It, all you're doing here is voting on creating this job. But part of that creation, in my mind, would be what that person's the, doing. The, the, the study is what Perrin Dower does based on like municipalities. And we really can't put a price on infrastructure needs and responsible growth. It's the two key things that the citizens voted us in for. Well, to, to, to take a, to quote you, Mayor, mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, the citizens, this is the citizens' money. Right. I mean, I think. Absolutely, and I'm going to put it to good use. <laughs> for, for us to know, I mean, 114 to 180 is a significant difference to know exactly where. And it's, it is a huge range, range, but that's not, you know, it, it also depends on experience. But um, this is also, like I said, streamlining, streamlining. Um, it's also bringing in an engineer. And right now we pay, I, I meant to get the total on that, but we contract out, we don't have an engineer on staff. So we do contract every bit of that labor. And I'm not being paid for these superintendent of utilities. So that can go towards it. And, you know, uh, I'm, I'm telling you, it will, will actually save money at the very beginning uh, with these hires. The, uh, the operations director, and I just got these at, uh, about noon today, so I haven't had a full time to read the job I description. I have no idea. Well, I, we had the job descriptions long before mm -hmm. that ready. Uh, so operations director, which is going to be basically the utility superintendent plus some other uh, supervisory roles. and that. The salary could come from the current super, supervisor position as well as some other positions possibly. Uh, but the economic and community development, that, that is a, a totally new position. Mm -hmm. uh, and like Jay was saying, the, the, the pay range without having a budget or something, there again, I'm, I like plans and having something instead of passing two positions that could be 300000 or more. Uh, I'd like to see plan well I did give y'all a strategic plan before we took office and in this strategic plan was my platform which was um, bringing in responsible growth and I believe that we do have to have the right people in place to accomplish this and I need to hire those people so they can help me accomplish that goal um, I want to take the full advantage of the next four years and make this happen for our city and to me 
the, the net difference, not that the salary should really matter as far as me hiring, especially a new department, and bringing the salary as a net neutral, you know, but it is net neutral. And then when you take the fact that I'm not taking the superintendent's salary, Gillespie just retired, but his salary was in there. You actually are, are saving a lot of money when you count the retirements happening at the, by the end of the year. So, um, again, that's you wouldn't one, have to do one position, right? For the no, this is for all of the all of everything. Operation, um, economic development, and planning. Where is planning falling into here? This it doesn't have to because it's already created. Okay. Uh, would one of these two positions be? It looks from my reading of job description like the uh, economic director would have some planning responsibilities. The planning is in the future, the vision, and um, the person that I want to bring in is a person that has helped rebuild cities after hurricanes. Um, she has access to funding. She lived here for a long time. I mean, you know her, and she's just a very dynamic, uh, very smart person. But the uh, job descriptions, I'm not sure if everybody had access to the job descriptions, but, I mean, it's, it's a very dynamic person that we would be bringing in. Mayor, uh, the question that I have uh, specifically for the Economic and Community Development Director, when I looked at your organizational chart, mm -hmm. um, and there was an assistance position there as well, so is that another position that is going to have to be created? No. Uh, that's fr uh, from an the department. It's, she's already there. Okay. And right now, um, it, since that's something that, that Heather would probably work into, it's splitting. Okay, so that position doesn't it? It's, it's not even something that has to be there. That organizational chart that, you, that I gave you is not something that's going to happen tomorrow. It's a vision well, I'm over time. I'm talking about it for budgeting purposes, whether we would have to budget another position for that. And then the follow-up with that is what type of budget do you see going to this department? So D uh, to what department? And, Economic and Community Development Director. Do you see right now to give them a, a budget to, to spend for it's, their activities? It's going to be under that department. We have a, a lot that's already there. Um, really, the person that we're bringing in for the economic development is just her salary for now. And as it grows and as we have needs, then we will add to that. But it will be in a way... Uh, that when we're adding these positions and opportunities for, you know, people in Fairhope, um, that it will be more than paying for it. I mean, we're not spending $1 right now on tourism and uh, true economic development. So you invest a little bit well, that, and you'll, you'll start, you know. Question was, and, you know, if we looked at a $150,000 salary and then I'm wondering, you know, if we had to have an assistant at whatever that salary the, that the, the assistant the budget, is not the budget if you were proposing in your budget you know whether you had fifty thousand or a hundred thousand I mean, saying right now there's no plans to have any money right. like I said for the budget right now as it stands and what you're voting on tonight is a savings because of retirements um, because of what I what I just told you I mean it, it's basically almost net and Pandora helped me with this because she knows who's retiring and these are uh, retirees that were, will not be replaced so like I said we wouldn't vote on these positions just so I could make them net neutral I hope you all understand that we're voting on these positions because this is what our citizens want they want responsible growth and these are the people I'm bringing in to help achieve that. I just think we're asking because of, you know, we've never had people in the city that made this kind of money before. And I think that, you know, it's our duty to ask the question of what other might be budgeted mm -hmm. because we, we haven't seen the budget. We, 
talk for an hour about the airport authority, which if we right. if we assume that debt is going to add, uh, we already five, have the debt. To 600. But we already have that debt. But what I was, <laughs> um, but what I was going to say about the uh, the payroll, we're spending not having a planned and not having responsible growth is costing us way more than these salaries. I hope you all understand that. In fact, we've been hemorrhaging because of it. So I, I don't think you all really, you know, how, it's not apples and apples. <laughs> how, how have we be, been hemorrhaging because of it? Every pending lawsuit that we have right now is due to planning. All of our big ones. But neither one of these two people are city planners. I know. They, the one for economic development is going to be over planning because it's, it's a lot more to that job if you'll look at the job description. And yeah, that's what I, I, mean, I, I saw that. That's why I asked you about would this person be Right. Able to because what you do is we're, we're going to, the whole goal is to organize every neighborhood, bring in experts in each field to do charrettes in every neighborhood and every corner of Fairhope, including outside of Fairhope, because that is where we need to engage the most. We show them a vision. It will be part of something that they want to do, and we will show them the benefits of coming into the city because we all care about how we grow, even if you're not in the city. Um, we care about Fair Hope, keeping its character, keeping what we have that's special, and the only way that we can do that is by coming up with a plan that includes everybody. And I need people to help me do that. And like I said, the, uh, the person that's going to be over utilities, that's, again, you know, helping us with the infrastructure needs and, and helping us run it as a, a business for a profit, I think we can agree that's, that's good. I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I mean, I see, uh, uh, I see a lot easier the operations director mm -hmm. set up. And I mean, right. I know that we currently don't have a utilities director. It's, the utilities um, director was a figurehead. Yeah. But I'm saying that salary is, is no right. longer being used. Right. See, he wasn't over utilities. But it just did that salary was, right. was, is there now. And then if we do but that, this is not just about how can we pay for this. You pay for it because when you're running a business more efficiently and more profitably, you, it pays for itself tenfold. Well, I, I, I get that. But, but as someone that was elected to be responsible for the citizens' money, I feel like I have an, an obligation to to ask these questions um, and I'm not putting you on the spot but I think I, I mean I think I'd be not doing my job if I didn't ask any of these questions um, like I said bringing in somebody that understands right now we don't have anything in place for the future we've only been managing this city on a year-to-year -year basis our budget becomes an annual event, and we all come in and we hope and pray, did I get what I want for my department? I mean, I promise you, things are going to be better. But we do have to bring in certain people to help achieve this. Now, like I said, we have a lot of supervisors. And... I could have come in and said, thank you for your service, supervisors. I'm bringing in my own team. Thank you. But I don't want to do that. And I would hope that y'all don't want me to do that. Absolutely. I mean, supervisors, do you want me to do that? <laughs> I don't think so. So what I'm trying to do is bring in two people that I feel confident will help me streamline things so everybody has a place and we're using their gifts 
I want to utilize every employee that we have now and hire more. That is my goal because we are going to grow the economic development department, which will be a very engaged department with community development, tourism, uh, public relations. I mean, it's, it's going to be a very dynamic arm of the government that we currently do not have. Any other questions, Council? Anybody? Jimmy? No. Jay, any more questions? That's all right. Okay, that will be uh, an agenda item. Uh, Mayor, I would like to say that um, I think that was very well said. Um, you know, it, it's hard when, you, when you're trying to affect change. And, and, and the change is not always easy. And but you just forgive the council when they ask a lot of difficult questions because as you alluded to the fact that you've been elected to do a thing that it is, you know, it really is our responsibility to ask all of these questions. It's Absolutely. for us to ask all these and fully vet these positions because and as you said, there are there are cost benefits that, that aren't seen on here. You know, there's not a benefit to necessarily that uh, when you hire this person, it's hard to imagine that spending this much money saves money. But but I hear what you say, okay? I hear what you say. You just, you know, well, I you. mean, I, I do want to point out that this was not our first conversation either. I, I That's why I wanted to meet with everybody individually to make sure that I was explaining the vision and the ultimate goal because the organizational chart that you're referring to is not going to happen for a while. You know, I mean, that's, that is what I see as the, something that the, the city will need to be more streamlined and, and simplified. I mean, we, it's, it's going to be better for the city. Let me ask you one more question about this, and this is, mm -hmm. this is kind of one of those sensitive questions that, that, that alludes to compensation. You know, it's, it's, it's very difficult to discuss this in a public forum when you're talking about somebody's livelihood, but are there any other uh, <coughs> terms of payment uh, that would be included for these positions? Uh, obviously, as a city employee, they would get, you know... Well, the operation director will be, uh, have a car. I, I, but not is, a new car. It'll be one we already have. That is that is something that the council has to put, I believe, in there. Maybe, you know, if council, if you want to grant that, that has to be, because that's part of the compensation package, has to be uh, included in any uh, resolution. Am I correct with that part? Pandora, can you answer that question? Mm -hmm. <laughs> The, the, we're just talking about compensation and the fact that uh, if it's the mayor's intention to give this person uh, a vehicle, I believe that's part of total compensation, part of, of, of benefits. You have to be, in, that has to be voted upon. I mean, all vehicles are, are personal property, are city property. I'm not exactly sure how that works into it because a lot of our department heads use city vehicles. Um, if there's a supervisor on call, I know they take it home. But I'm I not sure that's always been done right. But I in all my education by the league that all vehicles are property and have to be decided on like any other piece of property. Honestly, in the city. So I'm not saying that they don't. I'm just saying that if if if, if this is voted on, I want to make certain that that you get what you think you're getting and we don't have to come back and redo something. That's all I'm saying. So council, I think that it's wise to take that into into account. It's it's the same, the position we've had in the past had a vehicle, and we're not buying another vehicle. True, but this is a totally new, I mean, let's, let's just say, I mean, this is not. Right, it, it, it will be a lot more responsible. James had is a totally new position, and, and I'm not even certain that James' job description had that he got a yeah. vehicle. You know, he had a vehicle, but. I know, no, I know he had it, right. but I don't know if the job description right. said that he was supposed to get one, right. but, but we all know he was given one. Right. And I would rather just do it correctly than have any question about it. So that's all I'm saying. Okay, uh, council, if there's no more questions, do you have any more questions? Are there any final comments on that, Mayor? We're going to move to this last uh, work session agenda item that I, 
uh, rushed it onto the agenda because the people that are interested in it are very uh, much in a hurry to, to push this forward. Uh, I didn't know if we would get to it. We're, we're 20 minutes past time, but we're going to go ahead and discuss this. Uh, we can, you know, agenda meetings are just that. Talk about the agenda. We can talk about that in, uh, in the council meeting. So, uh, council, the HUD grant discussion, and uh, Jonathan, are you here? You want to, uh, why don't you come up here to the table? Sure. I will, I will try to give a, a, a quick overview uh, to this. This HUD grant uh, is uh, called, um, it's an entitlement grant. I don't know that it's a CDBG grant that was discussed. Uh, and, and, and don't let that have a negative connotation. Uh, what this is is to help the uh, lower income portions of the town receive monies uh, what is the per, are they paying like sixty thousand approximately? Around six, sixty thousand dollars a year. About yeah, about sixty thousand dollars a year. So the history is about what a year and a half ago, the council contracted. When I say council, that's the city contracted with SART, which is the South Alabama Regional Planning Commission, to put in an application for this grant money. Um, be honest with you, I don't know where that went, but it, it came up uh, with concerned citizens in the last several months that apparently that application didn't get very far. Uh, and we were told that we couldn't get the username and password to get into the HUD system to get the application put in. And, and I'll just be honest with you, that kind of sounds a little funny because we all lose passwords and usernames and we call IT and we seem to get usernames and passwords. And, and they give it to us and we move on. But uh, be that as it may, we were told that they could not get into the system to apply. Uh, so this was brought to our attention. Uh, the mayor and I and uh, Jonathan and several members of the community that are affected by this met just last week uh, to discuss this. And, and the mayor, in fact, uh, signed the uh, HUD application and uh, said that we should move in a different direction to uh, push this forward. You know, what that would entail would be to, uh, as the mayor envisions, it would be to remove SARPC from the process. And I believe, Mayor, you have somebody else that we can insert in that process. So the reason that this is on the work session for discussion is uh, to, first of all, let the council know what's transpired briefly. Um, if, if that contract is broken uh, with SARPC, you will be tasked with breaking that contract and then agreeing to whatever the path forward is. So we kind of want to know what that path forward would be. So just to kind of lay out my concerns is, is that path forward going to slow things down? Does that Are you asking me? Our, uh, Are you asking me? I'm just going to throw some questions out there. Oh, yeah, I can. I, can, I have. Know, does that slow the process down? Are we taking a step back by replacing SARPC? Uh, are there uh, additional monies that we're going to have to budget for this? Are there any uh, strings attached to this money? That Are there any landmines out there that maybe we should be made aware of? So I'll just, uh, I'll let either I, one of y'all address that. Basically, question. this was a grant. I think it was. it's been two years now. Um, that we contracted uh, SARPC to do the study. And yes, they did come up with some things that for some reason they weren't able to do it. And uh, meanwhile, the people that are being affected, their property is being flooded and they're incurring damages. And um, I brought in, you know, the person that, that I want to hire also and it just really, and I think you agree, Jack, that there really is no excuse for, for not moving it's forward a, in two years. A, you know, <laughs> I'd like to just term it that we might want to go a different direction. Right. But I mean, it's, that's no not really a, uh, how, but um, we're not breaking, we're not breaking a contract. The contract expired. Too. The contract so, okay, is expired. Yeah, you were going to get back to me, but we haven't spoken since then. So it's expired. We it's don't expired. have to cancel. Uh, to cancel it no. or terminate it as it's, as it's um, The amount approved was $45,000 to do the study, and if we combine this with the comprehensive study, we're not only going to be able to get more funding and layer it with all the things that we're doing overall, um, but it will be done in an efficient way with somebody I, I truly trust to, 
to make it happen. Is that going, is it, if we, are we going to have to contract with the person that we're speaking of? And do you have any idea what that it, it, uh, well, so, some of the, th if it exceeds a certain amount, which I don't think it will, I'm writing to get into a um, grant for BP funds. But I think it's going to be with this amount of money, 45000 and the money that we're using for, for other stuff, I think it's more, more than pay for it because this is for David Perks. And, you know, he has agreed to do it. He's a sought after urban planner, really sought after all over the country. And um, he would be helping with this project because of his relationship with the economic developer that I want to bring on. How long would it take you to uh, the application? Is about A lot less than two years. I'm just kidding. Well, yeah, um. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can't go back two years and, 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 it, and it, should have, it should have been done. Right. So what? Well, I, I do have to get my people here and we can move forward very quickly. So is this person hurts that you mentioned? Is that someone else that we're going to hire? No, th th this is not somebody that's hiring. This is to do the study. This is, I mean, he did one for Mobile. He did one for Jefferson County. He's done studies all over the country. I was to save some of that 45000 because we're getting 60000 and we're spending 45000 to get it. I These mean, two studies, uh, which is uh, a consolidated strategy plan and analysis of impediments to fair housing. Those are the two studies that are being done. One's $30,000 that we're paying for, one's $15,000. Right. We have to do these studies in order to go for this money. He's already done these study. studies before, and he does the application yeah. process, so y'all don't have to do that right. or find passwords. So I'm just saying that's part, that's, part of, <laughs> that's part of what's involved with the grant. And, yes, there were some issues with their software on HUD's side that lasted a long time, and we had a lot of excuses that we got from the federal government. And we tried. We sat on helplines for hours. So, I mean, I had an employee that literally dealt with it for three days, and he really didn't get anywhere. It was very difficult, and I didn't have anyone at the time that I could say, hey, I, with the, all your contacts, call somebody with HUD. Right. Let's get this going. Um, Sherry Lee, because she does a lot with HUD, she has those direct contacts, and so those would not be roadblocks anymore. Okay. That's great. Um, I, I think the program would be good for the city, but, you know, it is a relatively small amount of money, but when you put it into a pile over you know, the course of five years, that's how we looked at it back when we started all this. And really, I mean, we, we started this quite a while back. We were, we were labeled as an entitlement community through HUD, uh, and I believe 2013 they offered us this, this opportunity, and we declined that opportunity because it wasn't very much money. And steadily the money's increased a very small amount per year. So maybe it will increase more over time. Explain that entitlement community. Um, what, what exactly would there be money? What would the money be used for? To explain to the councilman what what the money is to be used for. It could be used for drainage improvements, infrastructure improvements, such as sidewalks and areas that might need them. Uh, we have to identify areas that are inside the city of Fair Oak that are considered low income. <coughs> and that's going to be done as a part of this process that Mayor Wilson mentioned. Uh, we'll have to get into all that. It's, it's really a boots on the ground kind of ordeal. I mean, it, it'll be a, a lot of people taking surveys and, and, uh, <coughs> and working with the communities that might be affected, you know, with this money. But, so, you know, you can do, from what I understand, you can you can put this towards even utility improvements. I'm not sure don't know about that, but I know infrastructure and sidewalks, things like that, roadway improvements, things in the right of way, parks, so it can be used for a lot of different things. The biggest challenge, I feel, is going to be trying to identify in the city of Fairhope where there are uh, enough areas that can, that can qualify for the program. And I guess a good point right there, Jonathan, is that I don't want to give false expectations. It, 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 it has to be spent within the corporate limits, correct? That's what I understand. And there might be some other, there might be some other things that I'm not aware of. But, that. but that's why I do want to bring in somebody that does this all the time. I right. mean, they're just, I mean, I this is what they do for a living. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of administrative work that I deal with a lot, but I, I haven't dealt with this program in, in specifically until I started with SARPC, and we were going to depend on them mm -hmm. to get, get this process going. And it's just been, you know, it was a little bit cumbersome.
the same release. Council members, do you have questions for Jonathan? Jack also asked about strings attached to the money. What are, what are the... I don't believe there are any. I mean, I, this isn't like us saying, okay, federal government, we're taking your money, um, and then the federal government just gets to, tell us, gets to tell us what to do with the money that we get or in the future tell us that we have to do certain things for any area of our community. So I don't believe there are any strings attached. I think it's a good program for us. But, uh, it's not a whole lot of money, but we do have to look at what we might, how we, how we might benefit five years down the road. Any other questions? All right. So just if I was to take a straw poll right now to uh, give some direction to the mayor, what uh, what would be your direction? <coughs> you, uh, because she's got to get this ball rolling. What would be the uh, what would be the uh, direction that you would like to give her? Anyone? I mean, if there's no I strings mean, attached, forward, I'm in favor of contact this person, um, tell them to get busy on this, and where to, I mean, if there's some something that has to be negotiated uh, with this person to, to come in, if we need to get a contract, um, and it might be that we have to get on the next agenda, uh, an authorization for the mayor to negotiate a fee schedule, you know, we have to do that every time. Um, would you uh, be in favor of that? As long as there's no strings. Yeah, I'd be in favor of that. Okay. Uh, so, um, Clark, do we, uh, do we have to uh, have the mayor, do we have to pass a resolution for the mayor to select the professional services, or can we just go right into uh, authorize the mayor to just negotiate the fee schedule? I think that's all we have to do, right? process that is approved by council is that you have to add his state law part of it to speak to. Is that you have to, um, with a professional service, you have to have the awarding and appointing authority, that's y'all, approve the selection of the professional service provider, believe it or not, before we discuss fees. That's why you would say we, so you we, can't just we say select uh, authorizes the mayor or, the, or approves the selection of and authorizes uh, the mayor to negotiate fee schedule. That's what we normally bring before you with the name of the person, and we've run them through the procedure. We've usually sent them the RFQ, they've, they've responded, evaluated, the mayor makes her choice, and then we bring that to you if it's <coughs> over certain limits. If it's over $15,000, uh, in fees, we bring it to you guys to approve the selection and the fee schedule of negotiation. If it's under 15, the mayor can select <coughs> and and move forward and even sign the contract for that selection. Over 15, it's got to go to you guys. I'm still not sure I got the answer on the selection. Can we put the selection on the next meeting? If we bring a name before you, yes, to select. Right. We have to we have okay. to select the person or company. Bring us a name. Bring us a name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. We can do that. I already have it. David Parks. All right. So yeah. So what would the process would be? Would be to just approve that selection, and then, like you said, you got selected the name, and then All right. Anything else, uh, council members, before we adjourn? And moving to our regular city council meeting. Uh, -E -E we'll rotate seats or change seats. All right, uh, I'll call this meeting adjourned. And uh, let's take a five minute break before we start our council meeting.